So a lot of uh, the audience occasionally, you know, won't be familiar with working with an advisor. Um, so, I mean, you talked a little bit about process. So t- walk me through a little bit about, you know, a new, uh, a new client when they come on board, kind of what the process looks like for a new client. Right. Um, it's, it's a l- it seems a little time intensive in the beginning, but it's really, really important. So once a prospect decides that they are going to engage us um, for a ongoing uh, relationship, the first thing is really kind of onboarding, kind of setting the stage of what the rules are, which is signing an advisory agreement, setting expectations, um, going through kind of the legalese and making sure everything is set and there's a clear understanding of what our promises and what their rights are. So that's really, really important in the front. And then we're just getting a ton of information, as much information that a client, and we try to make it um, as least cumbersome as we possibly can. So whatever method works for a client, we're trying to get all their information. Um, uh, Financial statements, uh, mortgage statements, any other related debt, uh, employee benefits, their wills, their tax returns, everything we possibly can get from a client as well. We have them fill out a little questionnaire so we can kind of gauge kind of where their head is at on certain on certain things. Um, and then we have what is probably, I think, one of the funnest meetings. It's a long meeting, but one of the funnest meetings is um, what we call a discovery meeting. And in this meeting, we spend the majority of the time, yes, we go through the, the, the actual papers that they've brought in, making sure we've got everything covered, but we really spend a lot of time on what this household wants, right? Um, and we're just getting a lot of history. Like I, one of my favorite things is we kind of build a family tree. And I love doing that because I love to see the people in the background that um, helped kind of build this couple that I'm seeing in yeah. front of me today. Yeah. Um, it may impact the plan, as you mentioned before. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's a lot of family dynamics that end right. up uh, impacting a plan. So, um, and then we ask a lot of questions about where you're trying to go, and in an ideal world, what does that look like? You know, how early do you get to retire? What does funding education look like? Yeah. How are you? Uh, what are your dreams? Do you want a vacation home? Do you just want to be able to rent someplace every year? You know, are you trying to do this big project and build a pool in your backyard? Whatever it may be, we go through all of the ideals. And then we kind of tone it back a little bit and say, okay, if ideals can't be met, what are the things that you consider acceptable? And we start kind of creating the guardrails of what we're going to do for trade-offs in their plan. Um, And then the next meeting at that point would be usually, if I always give the client the choice, I have some clients who love digging deep into the investment problem pro- process, others not so much. Um, and so for clients who want a little bit more of an education, we have them do a meeting, a collaborative portfolio design meeting usually that you run, where you kind of just dive in on our investment philosophy, what it is that we believe in how the markets work, and kind of set the stage of how a portfolio will be managed um, yeah. Again, and so that's that. That meeting is important, um, and then a few weeks later, we get together for an actual implementation. So we actually do the plan, and right. in that meeting, we just go through this is this is what your plan is saying. These are the items that we need to tackle, and then it's just tackling those things. And you know, you always say it's hard to eat the elephant all in one bite. Right. Um, it is very true. So we together yeah. we prioritize. What are the things that really need to be kind right. of tackled first? What's a realistic time frame? What's stuff that we can put off for six months? What's stuff that can be put off for a year later? Right. And then we're there just kind of in our our review cycle at that point. Right. Yeah. Okay. So implementation could be a lot of things. Though. It could be yeah, tax absolutely. stuff. It could be refinancing mortgages. It could absolutely. be paying off debt. Wills, trust. Wills, and, auditing uh, beneficiaries. That's right. a big one. Like, you know, yeah. I'll have a client who maybe they just did their wills. Yeah. But then I'm looking, I'm like, huh, your beneficiaries don't match up at all with, with what your estate plans. Yeah. So let's tackle that first. Yeah. Deal you know? with the gaps. And a lot of times it's easy. It, sometimes it's really easy stuff. Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated and, and time consuming. Yeah. Um, whatever it is, we just prioritize together. If there's something that's such a red flag that I, f- then we just push it up to the list and yeah. say, this is something that really needs to be tackled right. first. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's helpful. So, 